ordered. No. Wow. It was you guys. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that might have been like a little more of a Oh. Are those good? Yeah. Hey, Denise, what'd you do with all the audience? Yeah, we were packed, man. Okay. There you go. Well, good. That's all we can do. <coughs> Thank you. There were two meetings almost in a row where we had all 15 people. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Excellent to do that. Welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday, June 26, 2018 meeting of the Villarica Planning Commission. This is the call to order. First up is the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt this agenda? Motion. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second to adopt the agenda. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Agenda is adopted. Passed unanimously. First up is old business. Everybody cop have a copy of the minutes for May the 29th, 2018. All right. I saw no corrections required and uh, would move approval of the minutes as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? <coughs> uh, I'm going to abstain since I was not present at that meeting. Next up is new business. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, Lenise Lyons, Planning and Zoning Specialist, at City of Villarica. Our first case is Final Plat FP0218, um, ALA Townsend Village LLC requests final plat approval for Townsend Village at Alton Circle, Villarica, Georgia, um, uh, over multiple parcels as shown on the plat. Land lot 160 of the 6th District of Carroll County, currently zoned residential townhome. The property consists of 18.88 acres. What did you say the land lot was? The land lot 160. It says 182. Wait a minute, maybe you corrected it in the new one, let me look. You're doing Townsend Village, right? Yep. Our location says land lot 182, 6 district. Right. Oh, I'm just looking at that. <coughs> one six is good. Okay, so change that on the, uh, mm -hmm. gotcha. Gotcha. Um, consists of 18.88 plus or minus acres located in Ward 1. <coughs> um, so this final, if you're familiar with, uh, where Townsend Village is off of Daniel Road, um, this was final platted, uh, some time ago. I let I have four. the minutes in the <coughs> um, in your packet near the end. These are uh, rezoned from um, R4. Uh, um, this one, um, RA1. Or um, rezone from rural development single family to R14 to be de developed as multifamily townhomes. Uh, and it was originally uh, rezoned for, had the ability to have about 127 units. Um, so it's been final platted. There, ha there have been, there are some homes in the, um, in the townhome subdivision as, as it stands. 
um, what the applicant's looking to do tonight is to um, make some corrections to that final plat. They're reducing the lots, uh, the number of lots from um, 126, which is the approved density in the previous case, um, to 124. Um, so it's um, really doing some some maintenance on the previous how it was previously re, um, um, had platted um, to kind of help encourage the development to move along. Um, and you see, it's been all the lots have been recorded, and that's why we kind of did a big outline around it because we would have had to pull each and every parcel, and there was tons of them. Um, so they're just looking to continue on in that in that development um, as individual lots. Um, as it is already platted. Um, so this was really a housekeeping type of situation with this final plat. I think we had the, the previous one for Union Oaks it was kind of like that, but this one is a little bit more complete than, than Twin Oaks was. I ask a question about. <clears throat> oh, and the applicant is here tonight to speak if you have questions, specific questions regarding. Well, this may be this may go more to the applicant okay. uh, than you but do we approve plats with landlocked parcels um yeah you're, you're approving kind of this the alterations to this final plat right but we're and then they will record that and then that becomes the plat of record correct right this will be the become the plat of record so after <coughs> it's approved well, here. They'll also go to city council for final approval, and then they're recorded with Carroll County. Right. And then, um, okay, Carroll well County then, tax assessment according to this picture here on page one, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the name of that cul-de-sac is. It's the one that Aaron Court comes off of. If you look all the way down at the end of that cul-de-sac, keep going toward the red boundary mark, mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> You'll notice there's a little parcel there. Right, that's a one house that's in the middle of that. It's kind of hard to sketch around it. Um, but it, it doesn't show any ingress or egress. I mean, look, it appears on this, all I have to go by, that it's landlocked. Well, no, it, there's streets in, in there, so they, 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 they access right those same roads. That um, There's no ingress or egress. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, see, I didn't, I can't see the sewer in this over here. Okay, so is that included in our 124, or in, was it in the old 126? Both of them? All right, well, then I would just ask maybe in future some kind of notation that that's not a buildable lot. Mm hmm yeah, sure is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking about this right here. No, he's talking about this. And then this right here. But this one is completely landlocked. Right. <coughs> That's what he's talking about. Because on ours, all you see are just like blank splices in here. It doesn't have anything. You can't get out. It's landlocked. Right here. Yeah. Like right there. And even this one, you could at least go out to Daniel Road. Mm-hmm. That will there be, will we allow option. common it's walls? Yeah, it's hard to see. Ours doesn't have that detail. All detached. Thank you. Okay. And let me ask you this. Do we, <coughs> some of the existing units look like they were what I would call semi-detached? I know we used to have a lot of, you know, detached single family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, some, there are a few, though, that look like they're just zero lot line. And so, but that's not for this. Yep. Okay. All right, first up, uh, would the applicant or a representative of the applicant hey, please step forward? I've got another question for staff, for Mike. Okay. Um, <coughs> somewhere. I can find it in my notes here. 
It says it was rezoned to multifamily residential mm -hmm. in February 2004. Right. And then there's another place in the memo. About the RT from the town hall? No, where it refers to this as low density. And I'm thinking, I don't see how this can be low density if we've rezoned it as multifamily residential. Uh, let me see if I can find it again. You said in the note? Somewhere in the memo there is a reference to the fact. Oh, the future land use designation? Under, on the front page? Is that what you mean? Yeah, it says on future land, yeah. That's first yeah, place. future land use, right. current That's use, residential town home, future land use, low density. Well, but yeah. aren't we in the high density zoning? You're right. Um, the future land use, uh, that, that came directly from our future land use map. So it might just be inconsistent with what's actually there, which, which happens. And I think that might have been because of how it was done before. But, um, Low density? Yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe, uh, so long ago, I'm not sure what the zone of future lanes maps looked like then and during updates if it was not considered to update that future lanes to be more consistent with what's there. but. I'm not trying to be a yeah, big that, nitpicker, but you know it's one of those things about being what we say and say what we mean and all that stuff. And right. um, if we're changing the land use plan well, yeah. by making changes in zoning, no, this one's just final plat. Yeah, the other one is there's two of them together. Anyway, yeah, we, I'll table we can that. take a we can take a look at it since we're doing this process now, and, and part of the future land use the current plan update is to take a look at our future land uses. Mm -hmm. um, that's certainly something we can point out um, and have it updated um, on our map on our future land use map to reflect what's what's really on the ground. Um, I doubt someone's going to want to come in some kind of way and bulldoze everything and make it a single family residential subdivision right there. Low, low density um, under R20, which is a 20,000 square foot lot. So, but we'll make a note to uh, take a look at changing that from low density to at least from the medium density, if not high density. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> One reason for my interest is just to be certain we're not engaging in that old sin of spot zoning you know and just totally forgetting your land use plan yeah that's fine okay thank you very much would the applicant like to step forward and uh, that's why we're doing this.
I'll be the bike, would you? <coughs> They're difficult. I have to do it too when I come up on that microphone again. Yeah. Do you have any concerns about the number of units? There's one road in and out. It seems to me that could be a real issue for as many homes as you're planning. Well, many residents uh, as we do. You know, we, we did decrease by, by two units from what was originally the three. Uh, you know, being in the neighborhood, in and out, you know, I don't really see a ton of traffic right now. Where, no, where not right now, but uh, when this is built out, assuming it will be. Sure, well, I, what, what I've seen in the neighborhood has been very little, if any, traffic. Uh, very quiet neighborhood. It's, you know, it's not a lot of cars on the street or anything like that, which you know, tend to cause more. Dance, you know, no, but you had so you got a, a number of cars on vacant lots. That I didn't really see last time I was in there. They got grass growing up around them. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, I'm just. Uh, no, well, uh, I, I don't foresee that being, being an issue. You know, everybody had to go out and do some driveway, so um, as far as on street parking, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And Are y'all allowing on street parking? Or are you limiting it to one the, side? I don't believe the DHRA currently allows it. Uh, we're, we're not preparing any of this about the money that's going to buy that for homeowners, but they, uh, they've got a great management company in place, and we'll maintain their Okay. And what's the square footage? Uh, 15 to 1700 Okay. And how much are you looking to start selling it for? We're going to be starting at the 130s. It'll be I think they might have sold a couple of houses a little bit cheaper than that. We're going to have a little bit of a phase of issue uh, starting off. So it's you know, build as much as we can for the price of the Okay. <coughs> well, there is a homeowners association associated yes. with this yes, sir. development? Yes, sir. And, and it's uh, under a management company? It is a uh, power management out of power in the past. It's a management company. But I have plan approval from them for our homes. It's been a few months since I talked to him, but they're excited about us coming in. Yeah. Be eligible, all these units be eligible for things like FHA and VA financing? Yes, yes, they should. There, there's uh, no special requirements for, for this neighborhood, so they fall under any FHA or VA typical guidelines. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, if there's anyone else that's in favor of this, please step forward to the microphone. Okay, no diggers. Uh, is there anyone at this time that's opposed to this? Please step forward to the microphone. Hear the crickets. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. At this point, the public section is closed. Any additional questions for staff? Or is there a motion? Move we approve the application. We have a motion to approve the application. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the application. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Application is approved. Unanimously. So next up for you would be to attend the city council meeting because they have the actual say-so. Uh, but it'll be uh, th the results of this will be sent forward to them. Thank you. All right. Okay, next up is, um, if, if you guys decide you can hear these concurrently because they're tied to yep. one another, um, a rezoning application and future land use amendments. Um, Steve and Teresa Pover, <coughs> a vote builder for Georgia, request rezoning for property located at 414 Old Stone Road, Villa for Georgia. Parcel number B0500900004, land lot 192 of the 6th District of Carroll County. Currently zoned R20, single family residential to office institutional OI. Property consists of 0.6 plus or minus acres and is located in Ward 3. Um, the future land use amendment um, for the same parcel, the current current uh, future land use is low density residential and proposing changing it to public institutional PI. Um, so this property located on Old Stone um, actually fronts three different ways. There's a frontage on Old 
Stone, there's a furniture in Dallas, and another one on the north side drive. On the north side. Um, it's currently unoccupied. Um, the applicant is proposing to uh, to use the building, the, the home, as a medical office, um, or to repurpose it for a medical office. Um, for his application, if you notice, he discussed that uh, he originally came to the city in 2011, um, and the city was proposing the medical support overlay district. Um, and there should be a map of where the medical support overlay is in relation to this property building. It's not quite into, it's not quite in the medical overlay, medical support overlay. Um, but uh, in the photos, you see it's directly across from Tanner, um, pretty close to it. Um, so um, in staff's analysis, um, we uh, uh, believe it will have relatively low impact on the surrounding residential community. Um, we also discussed that the equal land use uh, map will need to be amended to reflect uh, if, it, if it is rezoned so that we are um, reflecting um, accurately the future land use. Um, in, in referencing the future land use, that, that area along Dallas is slated to be commercial. This area is kind of in a point of transition where it's kind of buffering the larger tanner use and there's still some existing residential. The medical office shouldn't have that much more impact on that on that network of streets. Um, so uh, that is in support of, of uh, the land use amendment and rezoning. Um, so for the rezoning, we're um, recommending approval with conditions, limiting the uses to business, medical, dental, and professional. Um, all improvements to be installed on property prior to occupancy and ingress and egress shall only be committed from Old Stone Road. Uh, it's just not enough room to come in off Dallas. I'm sure you don't want to fight with DLT on getting ingress from there. And the topography from the back doesn't really lend itself to to entrance from the outside. And the applicant is here to uh, to give you more details about the project. <coughs> Thank you. Well, wait a minute. Let me ask a question for staff. <coughs> when I visited this property yesterday, um, construction and remodeling was already underway. Wouldn't they, I'm assuming that means they had to get a building permit to do that? Um, for some of the work, yes, uh, a building permit was required. I know that he for sure came in for an electrical permit. Um, you can also see in the staff photos that we take took pictures of uh, of the of what's going on. Um, I was quite surprised when I came out because I ended up parking in the dirt because uh, there was no driveway. Um, but since then, a stop work order has been placed um, by what? a stop work order had been placed uh, by staff by um, one of our building inspectors um, because of the work that was being done as, as a suggestion that you know, a suggestion that. You might want to wait till the rezoning said and done before you go further. Um, but yes, uh, we we were aware of of, uh, of the improvements that he was working on. I know the roof was looking like it was about to be new. But I don't believe you we require a permit for that. Um, that looks like it's been pretty much completed. The roof? Yeah. Yeah, he, that doesn't require a, per, a building permit. I had the same concerns as Mr. Flowers uh, when I went by. You know, almost seems like this is after the fact. I mean, <laughs> it was pretty far along. In fact, there's a sign up there that says, you know, being built for. Mm -hmm. so. Tell y'all about it. Well, but we, we, we did notice it and we um, alerted him to, you know, that we were putting a stop work order on it. And he's come by and talked to us about it since then, so. Well, the <coughs> I'm just concerned if we gave him a building permit, allowed him to proceed, um, that could be awkward if there's. Usually, where you do shots, the mm. train goes by. What? <laughs> Took a quick nap.
They're just as vociferous at two in the morning and really? four in the morning. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, just I hate for somebody to go out there and get a building permit or something and be started on this and then potentially not get the approval in P and Z that they would need to use okay. it the way they intended. And I understand wanting to go ahead and get a jump on the on the work. And of course, I agree, replacing the roof needs to be done. But um, the things I saw out there went well beyond um, just replacing the roof. Um, one other question I have for staff is under um, <coughs> impact, it should be a relatively impact, it says, the comment says it should be a relatively low impact on the surrounding residential community. Um, um, staff recognizes that future land use map designates the parcel as low density, which is not uh, residential, which is not compatible with the OI. Um, but, you know, I think in recognition of the reality of where that is, what's going on there, and that huge expansion they have going on at Tanner, <clears throat> our recommendation to staff is that we take that under consideration here and this whole area where this parcel is located, we should consider a lot of that for rezoning. Uh, to OI because um, you can't do that until the, the the owner of the property has to want the rezoning. Well, technically. Well, I thought we right, could, well we can we do, could it. do an overlay. We could do can we do it in our land use plan um, for yeah. projections? In the comprehensive plan, right? For projections. Yeah. We can take take a look at the future land use map. Right. And um, or we could say we would like for this to be. Yeah, or it appears right. that the trend. But yeah, you could you can't unilaterally rezone. Right. We we already have one or two of the houses along there. Mm -hmm. We've already right. Approved. Yeah. So I think this is uh, this just goes way. along with the inertia that's already going on. Yeah. Right. Um. Not sure when our next steering committee meeting is, but I will bring that up. <laughs> um. I, think I definitely I don't think am. There's any plan? The last I heard, there going to present a draft in August. That's the last I've heard. That's, that's yeah, the plan. Um, but I know that for sure. I believe that we're going to have to take a look at the future land use map. Now, even if it doesn't happen under this, we can future land use amendments can always can be initiated by staff um, or anyone else um, concerning property because it doesn't change the zoning. It changes. It's, it's the, the outlook in the future. We see right. that what's happening. We see the transition so that, um, you know, we save a step in having to consider this change and doing this thing as far as a future land use mm -hmm. We already have it in place so that um, we show that, you know, that's compatible with that. Uh, I'll definitely reach out to Anna tomorrow, one of the consultants. Um, I know right now we're working on a short-term work program, making sure that's all free and clear so we can make up new projects to, to add to that list but um, definitely uh, the area surrounding Tanner is, is going through mm -hmm. uh, quite a transition and, um, and we've already approved things on the on the other side across 61 that's right on here I mean that whole area is going to be as much of a, of a huge magnet as Tanner's creating there right this is just going to be a <clears throat> Uh, there's going to be a huge need for private uh, offices and things like that. And I think we should consider at that time, at the same time, the impact on traffic and on-site parking. One of the concerns I have here, um, they may work it out, it may be a low-traffic office here, but um, I think possibly, depending on how many patients there will be at one time, this, you know, uh, having a sufficient amount of parking could be an issue. wasn't in the survey that um, you guys received um, was his parking plan he did include one
a letter of intent um, regarding the uh, handicap accessibility of the yeah, and then he lets his grass though. But I read that he's going to enclose that. That's going to be enclosed. Mm -hmm. And you haven't had any calls of anybody complaining? Like about nine or ten places. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just that one house there. So I'll watch the staff. Right. Uh, Any other questions for staff? She answered mine when y'all attend. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. So at this time, would the applicant or representative of the applicant please step forward, give us your name and address, tell us why we should consider both the, you want to do them both at the same time, rezoning and the, yeah, rezoning and the future land use amendment. Can you hear me? Is Can the light on? Is the light on on your base? Yeah. I can hear. Okay. Uh, my name is Steve Pulver. I live at 2578 Chipping Court in Willow River, Georgia. Uh, I want to clarify a couple of issues. Uh, my wife and I purchased this property uh, in April of last year as a residential uh, property. It had been empty for about 15 years. The original owners passed away. The daughters that inherited live in Marietta. They were <laughs> they went in and did a little rework, but they decided never to move back. So anyway, they finally put it on the market, my wife and I bought it. Uh, the original intent uh, was to make it a medical office bill because in 2011, when I investigated this, that was the uh, future idea of the town, to take that street and make it that when we bought the property, I went in and we decided maybe we better leave it residential. So we weren't real sure. It was quite a mess. The work that you see is a demo work. The city doesn't issue demo permits. I'm a general contractor licensed in about 13 states. and I've been doing this for 50 years. So I have a pretty good idea what I'm doing. I demoed the inside of the house all the way down to the stud wall. Um, we, I want to leave the outside intact because the structure is very sound and the brick is very sound. Uh, we're going to enclose the carpet. Along came Dr. Harris from Carol, along with two other doctors at different times, and are interested in this property. So <coughs> we decided to go with the medical office. Um, I had it gutted. I did most of that work myself with a couple of helpers. The front that you see, we tore out all that old concrete, hauled that all away. The driveway is going to be in the same place as the one we tore out. And uh, there will be 12 parking spaces. Three for staff, nine for clients. Uh, Dr. Harris uh, has a place there in Carrollton if you go in Bankhead Highway and Cedar Street angles off on the right. It's called uh, U.S. Pro Med or Med Pro. It's a service he's offering. It's kind of a cash and carry, no insurance. Great for people that have high deductibles, self-employed people. Uh, and he just excited about getting in there. So, we're going to put this together for Dr. Harris. The structure is not being added on. The base structure is going to stay the same. The front, where you see the CMU block, is a concrete front porch and an ADA ramp getting up to that porch. And when Mr. Harris came along and we got our architect involved, we decided 
that the plan will change to suit his needs, not my speculative plan. So that's why we stopped. Um, I had already uh, contracted with my electrician. We put in a 400 amp service. Uh, Georgia Power has run the underground. We're all connected. Uh, the gas company has, uh, the gas meter is not set, but there's gas to the building. It will have complete new MEPs, mechanical, electrical, and so uh, The roof had four layers of shingles on. We demoed that. Uh, the new roof is not on. That's only a protective cover. Uh, the roof will probably be metal, uh, but that's going to be up to, to the doctor. At the present time, we are in a plan design phase. When that plan design phase is complete, I will bring it to the city for permit. So there's no construction going on, only the demo part. If you go inside the building, you'll see some new walls standing up. In order to demo what I did, I had to put some walls up to support when I took down the bearing wall. The bathroom was totally rotted. I had to replace those joists, uh, but you can see all of that. Other than that, uh, you can open the door and it's wide open, and everything in it will have to be there. Uh, that's where we are today. The, it's in the hands of the architect. Uh, from there, there'll be a site plan prepared with the drainage, parking, all of the things that are required to do a commercial building what I do every day and those will be presented uh, I will permit the job supervise the construction for the doctor uh, and at this point in time uh, my wife and I plan to lease the building for a period of time and the doctor wants a option to purchase down the road uh, we are currently working with the next door neighbor to do the same thing uh, the one that's the close, the small little flat. The one that's got the landfill all around the house. Okay. And we're trying to help mark out. Is that on Old Stone? That's on Old Stone. Yeah. Uh, eventually, uh, we were at a, I was at a uh, planning meeting. Is that right? Yeah. Oh yeah. You had a you had a comprehensive plan gathering at the library a couple of weeks ago, and I happened to attend. And one of the things that we did was designated for future use all of Old Stone to be professional office yeah, building, primarily sense. because of what Pam did. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Any questions? I don't have any. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. This time, when Eddie young lady did a great job guiding. Me. Well, there you go. Look at you. <laughs> okay. Well, will anybody else from the sellout crowd like to step forward and speak in favor of this proposal? No takers. Okay. At this time, would anybody from this massive crowd like to step forward and oppose this proposal? No takers. Okay, all right, the public section is officially closed. Um, any recommendations or motions? I move we approve these two items with the restrictions as identified by staff. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve both items. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Both the rezoning and the future land use amendment are approved. And be sure to attend the city council meeting uh, because they're the ones with the final say. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item um, is something that um, Bobby and I talked about um, for, for, uh, for your planning commission meeting. It's proposing to do a pre-meeting that will start 30 minutes prior to the public hearing um, with the idea the intent to 
I do that. Um, if there are questions or anything you guys want to clear up or an get it have answered prior to the meeting, um, or things you wanted to see the entire file of the case of, of everything, um, uh, that would be that time. And um, we would just be like go through the agenda um, of the of the cases, and this would not be it would not be the public hearing. It will be open to the public. Um, the public won't be allowed to speak because um, that makes it a public hearing right, right. at that point. Um, but just to, no decisions will be made. You know, you don't really say, I, you know, I think I'll approve it. You won't say anything like that. But just, you know, if there were questions about anything that we staff has written or anything in the application you need to be cleared up, it just, we just think it, it might help um, to get some of that out the way before we have the, the formal hearing. Are you proposing to do this before every every meeting? Every meeting that we have is on the only The only thing I'd say is, yeah, I'll attend what I can. Fair I, enough. I work till 5, and it, you know, sometimes I can't get there, but... Um, what you will have got six year old out I wish. <laughs> I wish. But it's kind of like <coughs> how it works. No, it's a good idea. Yeah, like I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't have any opposition. I'm going to ask you for clarification before we're talking, so it's good to go ahead and have a process. I think it'll help catch and get questions with beforehand today. Right. Nope. I mean, we won't start till six, so we'll just probably just have it right in here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you come a little late, we can, you know, go over what you know. You guys kind of talk about things beforehand, so right. um, if you got any questions? You know, we'll be here to answer it. I think it's a good idea. Also, thank you for the modifications to the material that you presented. At least the maps are a little bit easier to read this time okay. than they have been mm -hmm. in the past. We'll work on it some more. I just oh. using the tax assessor's website is really just a you can only zoom in so far right. and then we can expand it more with the software we have, but it will get distorted. So we can work on some more things to kinda of make it clearer. Um, yeah, the more that can be done the better. Yeah. <coughs> well then that it would help uh, you know, if we had a an, a much better updated current city map to begin with and then but if you could uh, <coughs> if you if you could um, maybe include a, just a little sketch or something that kind of gave a little bit overview of the overview of where the site is okay um, in in with the package or a cover mem memo or something right. that would be well even along with improved maps um, there are a lot of the city street signs that are not yeah. legible, that don't exist. Uh, when I went out to look at this property um, for, for the replatting, um, I didn't have too much trouble finding it, but I got lost trying to get back out. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. It's, I, I, I went and I, I, I'm not going that far in here. I don't know. I, I think you can't get out with one way. Oh, you well, can get no, you, you, you can get it, you get on to Daniel Road, Daniel Street. Mm -hmm. I must have turned the wrong way oh. because I ended up out in the country somewhere. And uh, mm -hmm. right. there's a way that's almost straight out. And just just takes you out on. Yeah, to, uh, I find that's the way I finally got out. But, uh, but the city of street signs are are pretty bad. So when, when you get out into those kind of areas. Yeah. And did you need a vote to approve this? Um, an official okie dokie or? I, yeah, that's fine. Well, I, you know, we can easily make a motion so it helps you guys. All right. Call it a pre meeting workshop. So that way it's similar to what the council's doing and it, it's a like minute session so we can get a little more in depth with y'all okay okay uh is there a motion to have a pre-meeting workshop starting at 5 30 prior to all of the plan and zoning commission meetings so moved second. have a motion and a second all those in favor raise right hand all opposed approved so did you use that voice? 
Um, of course, we're compensated for that, right? Yes. Um, there will be uh, cups of ice. Excellent. Oh, you, get your, you get your standard. I'll barter. I kind of been liking this. You get your standard salary. Yeah, I get you some rabble rousers. The power I feel from it. this is. Um, like four. Like four, right. Um, monthly right. planning and zoning report. Um, not much on that front. Um, like I was saying earlier, um, um, we are working now on our short term work program. Um, we've got a lot of projects on that document. That's also in the comp plan. Um, that's tied to capital improvement money. Um, there are a lot of projects on there that are are done, that are still underway, or just getting underway, or still being still occurring, or kind of non-existent anymore. So, working with Tom and our, our city manager, and um, he's helping me out with asking the different department heads on the status of those projects. Um, I will uh, double back with Aunt Anna and Inga about the, the final meeting dates. I know they discussed them at the last um, at the last public meeting, the final dates. Um, but it's about time to lock those in. Um, and I think the idea was to have one of the, la the last open houses when people are going back to school off the summer break. So. Um, that is uh, the plan, but I will um, get back with her this week um, and, and see uh, what the next moves are and also bring up um, the point of the future land use map. I'm pretty sure I remember Tom saying that that's something he in particular was interested in. Um, to, uh, he, you know, our land uses are going to affect the way we're able to grow as a city, quite frankly. And, um, if our maps don't align with well, where we say we want to go, you know, that's a big, big, big hurdle to sometimes to cross. So we want to make sure that we are actually putting a plan in and a map in that is consistent with uh, what we say and how we how we move forward. Um, also, I like to introduce Tracy Carmichael. She, um, you all know Katie. Um, Katie has moved on to a different department here in the city. Um, so. Um, Tracy will be um, in her stead, so you'll see her at our planning commission meetings, um, running whatever happens back there in that room, um, and uh, helping us helping us out in the community development department with planning and zoning, historic preservation. Um, I don't know if y'all knew Katie did all this stuff, but uh, building permits, business licensing, um, notarizing documents, uh, and kind of being. Um, Kind of being our first layer of protection from the public um, as far as routing questions and calls and things like that. So, you don't need protection, do you? Well, what are you? Uh, absolutely. You try telling people what they can and cannot do with their property. That's <laughs> why we're on here. That's why this is fun. Yeah. yeah and all right. All the other planning commission, where they, they decide. So, we're happy to have um, Tracy. She's um, coming from a different department in uh, the city hall. So, um, got some big shoes to fill but uh, they Katie and Tracy have been working very closely to, to make sure there's no over, you know um, no gap in uh, coverage and uh, everything's been going swell so far so we're just you know happy to have someone step in and, and take the reins on, on a lot of this work so just back up a little bit to the comprehensive plan okay you talk to Inga or Anna or whoever yep Last I recall, they were talking August, September, and October. And the three plans. Nothing was said about steering. And she is very prone to put out an email saying uh, well, on Friday, and this says Monday it will be the steering. Mm -hmm. be nice if there were a little more advanced notice. Okay. Plus, I'm really concerned because I haven't seen anything from them. We've got comprehensive plan, we've got the RSVP plan, we've got this walking trail plan. Those have got to come together, right. it seems to me, under the comprehensive plan. I don't know if those people are talking to each other or not. So is the RSVP plan the same as the Renaissance plan, which has already been printed? Yeah, is uh, that the same? RSVP. Okay. I think the RSVP is a long acronym for Renaissance. 
I'm not sure what the other letters are for, but it, it's specific to downtown. Yeah. Um, and I know that in the update that we're doing now for the overall comprehensive plan, there are el- that that was a starting point for yeah. for this plan. Well, the comprehensive One plan is basically a plan that has to be turned into the state. Right. It's just a requirement. Um, basically. Right. Um, and I the, I believe that we have to have that done by October. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. We are in a crunch, um, but the the consultants are very much so aware that we have all of these plans working at the same time. One is nearing completion with the um, um, with the with the trails plan, the trails master plan, um, and it, it's gonna. I believe they're gonna take it into consideration, even if it's not, if it can't be completely folded in. There has to be mention of it. We're gonna advocate for mention of it in there, and then our next steps will be to codify. How we get those trails done? Um, how we require in certain new developments if your property is touching this, we want you to install this much of the trail. We um, we'll have to look at implementing ordinances that that make sure that that happens if we, on the planning and zoning side, on the land use side. Um, so it's it. I think putting it in the comp plan just makes sure it stays on top of everyone's mind moving forward, not just us, but every department is supposed to be taking a look at our comp plan and making decisions um, kind of you know at least partially thinking about what we've said our long range goals and objectives are <coughs> um, but I will get clarification on that um, from Inga and uh, back on the other point welcome aboard thanks for helping out and uh, good luck to you and a your new venture <laughs> oh. Did you tell her about the hazing period followed by the plan and zoning tattoo? <laughs> we all have one. Initiation. It's initiation. <laughs> well, we can't paddle anymore because well, this uh, fund's been yeah, just... But the council has modified the tattoo plan. Yes, the tattoo plan's much smaller, but you have three choices. There's the symbol of the... Well, anyways, we'll get the bucket. Quickly, y'all, if I can... Uh, Give you just a quick update on where what the community development office is doing from it lines with um, so far since January 1st we are approaching 90 building permits residential. Um uh, the majority are but they're scattered in the other areas as well. Uh, we're waiting on some approvals on the roads and sediment control on, on some tertiary plans for Augusta Woods, which is on the south side. 123 lots that have been bought over there, and they're, they're, they just have several things that are that are in the pot just waiting. Uh, we really think we're going to sell at least 200 this calendar year. Um, We've got the new Taco Bell at Mirror Lake going in, and we've got the uh, Sugar Foods has not that they have not come in for permitting yet. I know they were in the middle of doing a bunch of changes to their their fry plant and stuff like that that they're working on. But uh, um, the uh, uh, Southwire large facility in Cape Center Court is Douglas getting side. close. Yeah. Yes, yeah. getting close. They're going to schedule it in August, I think. So we're, you know, the economy has really bounced back. Uh, we're trying our best staff-wise to be able to manage it. I'm very sick that we're not going to be able to with the staff we have, but we'll add more than we need to. Um, we're doing everything in-house now. Building inspections, everything. Plan reviews, everything. So uh, it's made for our process to be like, I was telling the applicant here tonight, that we're looking at no more than a three or four day turnaround per meeting, which is you know, pretty good even at that. Uh, but, uh, things are really, really picking up. Whatever happened to that uh, plan to develop the uh, multifamily homes down On 61? Around, I'm sorry? On 61? Yeah. The big one? Yeah, the big one. It's still, it's still hanging around. He's getting ready to apply for his only, which is supposed to be the uh, 
Got to go through the GRI process with the state and all that stuff to sign up over there. Over there by base range, Yeah, yeah. That, base but up, up this side of base range. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's still very much alive. Not this side of, it's the other side of base range, right? And it towards Carrollton. It's down, what's the other school down there? Five Sanders. Five Sanders? No, 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 it's not as far as base range. No. It's on this side of base range. They're on the right? Or yeah, it's on the right. Charleston Place. Where all those lands are. Charleston lands. Place is just below Charleston Place. Right. Well, there's another one. The, the old Williams Mountain. Now that one, that one you're referring to, uh, Mr. John, is, is we, they withdrew that and they're trying to get another buyer on board. So that has That's the one I was Oh, no, they're, they're talking about the big one. It's 226 acres. Yeah, it's all that land in the right hand side. Yeah. You, you know, the thing about those is... Um, density, population uh, growth, but right along with that comes our ability to serve it with water and sewer. Oh, yeah. You can't have a 220 some odd unit multifamily project go in and expect them to, to be served by well and septic tank. No, they, in, in <coughs> fact, that's part of the whole process, you know, how much of an infrastructure improvement <coughs> is it going to take to serve that? And you, you get the developer that's doing that to buy in with a development agreement to agree or commit to make those improvements. So they they always bear the cost or most of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well good. And then what are we, and you said I think that you're expecting a total of 200 permits for this year? For this year, yeah. How many of those are residential? All of them. And so. But that doesn't count that. I know. That, that's I, I agree. On I down understood. The road. But, but do we have the capacity to add those 200 units? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I worry about that every single day. I bet. Well, so do I. But I brought that up in public comments, and the answer I got was, oh, we can buy, I forgot how many millions of gallons from Carroll, but that doesn't mean capacity if the leaks haven't been fixed. And the Well, buying buying water for, for, for drinking water is one thing, being able to treat the wastewater. Right. Yeah. The second, the, 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 well, and I'm concerned about either one of those. I think we ought to be self-sufficient oh, yeah. uh, in that. And um, I would appreciate if you'd pass that word along to the... Uh, well, trust me, we talk about it almost every single day. Because um, I have developers calling me since, since, since we are the where the rubber meets the road, the first point of contact on, can you serve my lots that sure. we have platted? And I'm like... They're flatted. I don't know what to tell them, but we've got we've got some. What do you mean? The things that have already been platted yeah. and agreed upon? Yeah, like 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 the the uh, developments on the Mirror Lake side that that were oh yeah platted, half built, lots left. Yeah, those kind of things. And uh, in fact, I'm meeting with uh, with Mr. Brenny with with uh, Joffy tomorrow to discuss some additional stuff. <laughs> so hold back, Joffy. Uh, David Brennan. Uh, he, he's the guy. He's the point of contact that's been that I've been talking to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we'll you know, we we just do the best we can. Well, I spoke to the Horton superintendent out there a month ago, I guess. And I'll tell you there. Their plans are to go hammer and tongs. They're well, they, they've purchased 31 lots in water mist. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're working on the and sediment control plans on that. And in fact, we've already got the, the permit applications for six of those. And so, you know, they're, they're just going to start coming in. You know, yeah. A bunch of those. Yeah. And if, if the sales, I was going to say, if the sales really begin to. I haven't seen anything. We've got a new uh, addition to a um, self storage on Edge Road, which is not a, not a big not a big project. But uh, um, Tanner is doing a medical services warehouse right there, pretty close, just down from Old Stone. But we just talked about a small facility there, but nothing substantial. Most of that road. But we're, you know we're. Where's the Where's the Taco Bell going? Right, right side by side with the McDonald's. 
and that other one's in the out part really? on the north side. Finally, that's the first construction since uh, they put Publix up. Their plans yes. have been approved now for about four months, and we, we finally started calling them like, what happened to you guys? You were beating our doors down trying to get these plans approved. And so they, they changed some general contractors and that kind of stuff, so they came in the day. <laughs> but anyway, we're, we're, we've got our work cut out for us for sure. Thanks for all y'all's good work. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we got all the updates. And Move, this we adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, yes, second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Four. Unanimous adjournment vote. I'll even say it for Willie. Fifth. Yeah. <laughs>